This is a drop of pond water. The green spheres gliding elegantly through water are called volvox. These spherical algae offer a unique glimpse into the workings of evolution, demonstrating how unicellular life developed step by step into multicellular life. But before we get into this in more detail, let's take a closer look at what Volvox is and what makes it so special. Volvox is a multicellular alga, around half a millimeter in diameter. Like all algae, also Volvox is able to do photosynthesis, just like plants. The spheres consist of an outer layer of cells, arranged in a regular pattern. The cells are embedded in a jelly-like matrix, holding them in place and giving the sphere its shape. This jelly layer is the so-called extracellular matrix. Additionally, the cells are connected by plasma bridges looking like roads on an idealized map. Each cell of the somatic cell layer has two flagella and an eye spot to sense light. The flagella are vibrating strings used by the cells to create thrust in order to move through water. The coordinated combined thrust of all flagellas within the sphere is enough to push it forward, allowing it to actively follow the light and avoid obstacles. Light is essentially Volvox's food and it has to ensure it is exposed to enough light in order to survive. Depending on the angle of incident light rays, the thrust of the cells is adjusted, allowing coordinated maneuvers. The flagellas of cells exposed directly to the sunlight will beat slower, while the flagellas of the cells on the backside, which receive less light, will beat faster. The cells on the inside of the Volvox sphere are specialized on reproduction. These germ cells will grow into new Volvox spheres. The newly formed daughter spheres will stay inside the mother sphere until they reach a certain maturity. Eventually the mother sphere ruptures and dies off, releasing the new generation into the world. The specialization and division of labor of these cells within a Volvox sphere is remarkable and makes Volvox to a simple yet fully developed multicellular organism. All cells within Volvox work together as one unit. And now let's get to the really interesting part. The evolution of Volvox. Volvox evolved from increasingly complex algae colonies, which allows us to visualize evolution step by step. While our human ancestors, like the Australopithecus or the Neanderthal, have gone extinct, Volvox's direct ancestors are still alive and can be found today. All started around 250 million years ago. A mutation occurred in this unicellular alga, called Chlamydomonas. After cellular division, the cells couldn't separate properly. A raft-like colony started to form. Bigger size now helped to avoid predators and to share nutrients. Over time, this raft started to ball up into a sphere. Swimming in one direction was now much easier, which benefited survival. In the next step, the sphere enlarged and the cells within the colony started to specialize partially. Some cells became germ cells, able to reproduce, while others lost the ability to divide. In the last and final step, the germ cells wandered inside of the sphere, while the somatic cells started to form a simple body layer. Volvox was born. The cells of Chlamydomonas and the cells within Volvox have extremely similar genomes. What mostly sets them apart are mutations in gene regulation and expression. Volvox shows us directly that complexity is reducible and that more complex multicellular life can evolve from simple unicellular organisms. Observing its development also does away with a misconception of evolution. In order to evolve and progress, the predecessor organisms don't necessarily have to die off, but can coexist with the other, more advanced relatives. Volvox is absolutely fascinating. If you have a microscope, I recommend you check it out. This is a fantastic beast. Thank you so much for watching this extremely basic introduction to Volvox, but I hope it awakened your interest for Volvox. Let's dig up some more dirt and let's stay curious. See you the next time. Bye bye.